is we all have to do something to where we're going to be able to make it. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And how you do that is by doing what the Lord wants us to do. Thank you, Lord. If we don't do what the Lord wants us to do, then we're not going to be pleasing to him. Amen. And when we're not pleasing to him, when we reach the end of our journey, we're not going to hear him say, well done, people. We got to know what the Lord wants us to do. Come on, brother. And that's already been brought out this morning. Yeah. Already. Thank you, Lord. And I agree with that 100%. But I was, I was reading a little bit the other day. And it's, it's about Saul. And since Wednesday night, Come on, bro, man. it ain't left me yet. Touch it, bro. Yeah. it ain't left me. Touch yeah. it, bro. And some people want to know, well, how are we going to make it? These things coming that people say you're not going to be able to handle it. You're not going to be able to put up with it. You're not going to be able to withstand it, whatever's coming. Come on, brother, man. Well, nobody knows what's coming. We have an idea. We have our own opinions. But really and truly, we don't know what's going to happen. Thank you, Lord. Y'all may be here, but I might be somewhere else. Help him off. Yeah. Help him or either y'all might be somewhere else, and I may be here. Help him off. What it's going to boil down to is you're going to have to have the Lord on your side Amen. to be able to make it. Yeah. You're going to have to have your mind made up. Yeah. I'm going to serve the Lord, whether I have to go by myself, just be me and the Lord. Or me and a brother, or me and a sister. What it boils down to is how bad do you want to make it? Are you willing to do what it takes to be able to make it and be able to stand? And I ain't throwing this off on nobody. I'm included just like you are. This is what we have to do. Number one, we're going to have to do what the Lord wants us to do. Amen. Number two, we're going to have to keep our praying done up. We're going to have to keep our fasting done up. Brother Van, have you fasted this week? No, ma'am, no, sir, I have not. Help him, Lord. But like I said, I'm included too. What I do or don't do, that's between me and the Lord. Yes. That ain't between me and nobody. That's between me and the Lord. If the Lord really, really wants me to fast, I will be willing. But as far as I know, He's not moved on me to do that. And I'll give you another example. The Lord don't have to move on you for you to fast. It's how bad you really, really want the Lord to do something for you or for somebody else. And that's the best way to get his attention. Take that plate and push it back. Even though he's not moving on you. But you're willing to make sacrifice. that sacrifice, yeah, sacrifice big. because you want the Lord to do this for you or for somebody else. That's right. Help my brother. That's how bad 
we got to want this, people. Amen. We're going to have to put this before anything else. You're going to have to put the Lord before your husband, before your wife, before your children, before your grandchildren, whatever. And no, I'm not telling you to be ugly to them. And I'm not telling you to disown them. But you got to put the Lord first. Because that's all that's going to matter in the end. Thank you. <clears throat> if you want to escape this world and its trouble and its trials and its temptations, have a close walk with the Lord and you can escape these things. Yeah. Amen. He'll make a way, bro. He will make a way when you think Thank you, Lord. they ain't no way. Yes. Help it all. Help our brother. He'll make a way Amen. when you think they ain't no way. Yeah. He's a way maker, brother man. Who who are you gonna go to Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. when mama and daddy ain't around no more? Yes. Or you're all alone and by yourself. Yes. Who are you going to go to? Who, who are you going to put your confidence in? Lord, Lord, man. Who are you going to put your trust in? you got to put it in somebody that you can trust. Yeah. Yeah. you got to put it in somebody that's going to come to your rescue. Yeah. Man will fail you. Yeah, he will. A woman will fail you. Your children may do things that you dislike. Your husband or your wife may do things that you dislike. But they won't, the Lord, he won't never disown you. Amen. No matter how hard it may seem, no matter how impossible it may seem, he'll do to depend on. Amen. It says in his word that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. Said he's all with us, he's with us always. Even until the end of the world. Amen. He's always with us. Always. He won't never leave us or forsake us. Come on, brother. Help you, Lord. I'm going to read a little bit. Help you, Lord. Y'all might be surprised about this. Help you, Lord. But it's in Acts chapter 9. Not too far. From where I read, it ain't been too long ago. It ain't too far from it. It's in chapter 9. It'll probably start about, uh, let's see. I'll start about the 20th verse. And this is talking about, about Saul. And he escaped something. Yeah. And because he did, the Lord was with him. The Lord was on his side. And that's the way we're going to have to be. Like I said, if you want to escape this world and its trials and its tribulations and all them things that's a coming, you're going to have to have a close walk with the Lord. In other words, you can't you can't put him back here yeah. behind you. Help us, Lord. You got to have him up here in front of you. Let him do the leading and the guiding and the teaching. He's a lot, brother. He's the one that's in control of it all, anyway. Amen. If you put the Lord back here and you up front, you in you in front of him. Then you might get in his way when he's trying to work and when he's trying to do something. Keep him in front of you. Don't put him behind you. Keep him out in front of you all the time. You know how you stay out of trouble? Keeping him in front of you. You know how you overcome things? Thank you, Lord. Keeping him in front of you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. You know how you get strength? By keeping him in front of you. 
When you get to your lowest point in life and you think you can't go no further, you're just about to give up all hope of ever getting anything that you want, whatever it may be, he'll reach down with his great big hand, yellow, just like this right here, he'll reach way down there like that right there and grab your hand and pick you up. Amen. That's the kind of Lord that we serve. Yeah, he's perfect. And he knows just perfect. how far you can go before you need the help that you need. And I ain't saying this to brag, and I ain't saying this to boast, and I ain't saying this to put me up on no high pedestal, nothing like that, but I just want to tell you something that happened at my house the other night. It was about two or three o'clock in the morning. Two or three o'clock in the morning. And somebody needed help at that time of the morning. I had no idea that this was going to happen. I had no idea that it was even going to happen. Didn't even enter my mind. But I felt like praying. Thank you, Lord. This person. Yeah, the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Most people at night time, they sleep that time of the morning. Mm -hmm. I was asleep, but I woke up. Yeah, the Lord. And when I woke up, this person needed help. And I knew they needed help. Yeah, the Lord. I knew it. But I didn't know what to do. Me personally, I didn't know what to do. So I sat there for, for a little bit. Yes, Lord. And I felt like praying. So I went to praying for this person. Yes, Lord. And something happened. I wasn't even expecting it to happen. But it just happened. I prophesied at that time of the morning to this person. Had no idea that was even going to happen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's how the Lord works. Thank you, Lord. Me personally, see, I didn't know what to do. All I felt is to go pray. And that's what I've done. And the Lord moved. Thank you, Lord. That's how he works. When you least expect it, you don't know what else to do. He comes to the rescue Thank you, Lord. when you don't even have no idea Thank you, Lord. how it's going to work out. Yeah, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Perfect. Thank you. Perfect will God. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> Me, I didn't know that was going to happen. It wasn't even on my mind to even, I didn't even think about doing that. All I felt to do was pray. And I obeyed that and the Lord took over. That's what happened. I had to get willing to pray, see. I didn't know what to do. But when it when I felt to pray, that's what I do. And the Lord took over. And believe it or not, this person got better. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. They got better. What nothing I done is what the Lord done through me. And when that happens, you knew it had to be the Lord because you didn't even have that on your mind. Had no idea that that was even going to happen. The Lord can work in mysterious ways. Sometimes we might not understand. Sometimes we may not fully understand how he can work these things out for us. That's like me a while back. 
I wanted a different job. I really, really wanted a different job. I got to the point, and I knew I couldn't do this, but this is just how bad I got the feeling. I wanted to literally quit the job that I had at the time. That's how bad and how worrisome and stressful it done got to me. I wanted to quit so bad, I don't know how many times. But I knew deep down that I couldn't just walk off and quit. I was going to have to have something <coughs> else before I could do that. And I knew that. I knew that. And the Lord, he worked it all out. He worked it all out for me when I least expected it. Yeah, the Lord. I was at the house one day. I was inside the house. Yeah, the Lord. And my wife was outside. And I heard her outside out there. <laughs> and I, I just went to the front door, you know, to kind of see what was going on. And when I walked to the front door, I don't remember if she come up the steps or just walked by the steps. And all that I heard, and I knew who it went to when, it, when she said, Thank you, Lord. All I heard was, I will. Thank you, Lord. That's all I heard. And I knew, or pretty much figured what it meant when that come out that way. That's how the Lord works. He knew how far I could go and he knew what I needed. He knew that I was just about to reach my end point, so to speak. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But he worked it all out. Thank you, Lord. That's how the Lord works. Yes. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all that seeking for the Holy Ghost when you least expect it, that's when it'll come. Yeah. But in the process, you have got to be doing something for that to happen. Amen. You can't just sit on your beach and hope, well, I'll get it one day. Or maybe I'll pray another time. Another time might be too late for you. Another day, you may not see another day. Or I'll wait till I get everything that I want in life and then I'll pray and get it. You may never see that time in your life. Your life may come to an end before that time. Do it now while you have time. Pray and seek Him. Every time you come to church, every time at home, a lot of us, if we really, really think about it, we got free time on our hands and what are we doing with our time sometimes? What are we doing with our time? Are we praying? Are we seeking? Are we just moseying around? Well, I ain't got nothing to do. I'm bored, or, or I wish I could go to somebody's house, or, or what's going to be more important than that is we hear the Lord say, well done. You ain't going to hear him say, well done, if you ain't doing well. Yeah. We got to be doing his will to hear and see these things that's coming. And y'all done heard it. I done heard it this morning. He's soon coming. And a lot of people, you tell them that, they say, well, I've heard that all my life. And it ain't happened yet. But it's going to come one day. Are you ready? If you ain't, you better get ready. Y'all, y'all, some of y'all children are young. 
and you think you got your whole life out in front of you, and you got plenty of time. No, you don't. I want each and every one of y'all young people to listen. Yeah, and I ain't saying this to be ugly, and I ain't saying this to hurt nobody. But if you really think you got your whole life out in front of you, go visit the graveyard. Get bigger and bigger. They were from this size yes. to a full length. <laughs> so at any given time, your life can be over. And you better keep that on your mind. Those of you who ain't got the Holy Ghost, you can have it. You just got to make the sacrifice to get it. I'm going to read it a little bit. 20th verse, Acts chapter 9. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. It's talking about Saul now. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is not this he that destroyed them, which called on this name in Jerusalem, and came hither for that intent, that he might bring them bound unto the chief priest? They already done heard about him, they knew how he was, but what they didn't know or didn't understand is he had done made a change in his life. That's what every one of us has got the Holy Ghost. That's what we had to do at one time or another in our life. We had to make up our mind to do it. We had to have a change in our life for the Lord to come into our life. That's like y'all young children. I can understand that y'all like to do things. Y'all like to go places. You like to be with your friends. And there's nothing wrong with that. Not a thing in the world. But don't let it get in the way of you trying to come to the Lord. Amen. If you feel like you need to stay home and pray, but yet your friend is having this, I'm just going to use this for an example. Your friend's having a birthday party, and you really, really want to go to that party, but yet you really, really feel like you need to stay home and pray for yourself. Can't nobody make that decision but you. Either you're going to stay home and pray, or are you going to go to that birthday party? Which more is important to you? Yes. Which desire have you got more than you have the other? You want the Lord more? And you want the Holy Ghost more? Or do you want to go to that party that ain't going to last probably two hours at the most probably or three and then you're going to be back home and even though you went to the party and you kind of enjoyed it, somebody said something and hurt your feelings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, see, you could have avoided that if you'd stayed home and prayed for yourself. You could have avoided that little hurt. Yeah. You don't never know how things are going to turn out until you put the Lord first. That's what we all need to do. Me too. Me too. And I'm, I'm going to be like, I think I heard Brother Josh say this. And far as he knows, and far as I know, the Lord ain't told us to give up our fishing or our hunting, not yet. But some of y'all might say, well, why, ain't he, why ain't he doing something on Saturday instead of going fishing or hunting? Why ain't he out there going and seeing somebody or, or visiting somebody or whatever. There's nothing wrong with going and visiting and seeing people. Yeah. 
But, I'm going to put a but in there. Help me, Lord. The Lord don't have to move on you to visit people. No. The Lord don't have to move on you to do something nice for somebody. Amen. Amen. That's right, brother. Should be doing that more. It's what is in your heart that you want to do more than you do the other thing. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. We need to have our minds set in a way that's pleasing to the Lord. Amen, brother man. Thank you, Lord. I give you a little example. Just, I ain't saying this is going to happen, but it could happen. And I'm going to use myself that way I don't hurt nobody. Yes, Lord. Just say I planned a, a good fishing trip to go somewhere. Well, I got the boat ready. I got it filled up with gas. Got my truck filled up with gas. I got me something to eat. I got me some drinks. I'm all ready to go. And I lay down at night. And in the middle of the night, I'm awakened. And the Lord speaks to me and says, tomorrow, you do not go fishing. I done got everything ready. I'm ready to go. All I got to do is get up and go. Everything's ready. Everything's fine as far as I know. But the Lord tells me not to go. Right then and there, I have to make a decision. Whether to listen to him or do what Van wants to do. Yes. Yes. He ain't told me why yet. He just told me do not go. That's right. Plain and simple. Do not go. What am I going to do? <coughs> what I better do is I better listen to the Lord. I better not go. I better stay at the house. Amen. It could go different ways, being the Lord told me not to go. It could be that something's going to happen, <laughs> and I'm going to get hurt, or I may lose my life, yeah. or get broke down and ain't got no way home. It could go all kind of ways. He told me not to go for no reason. Amen. Yeah, There's a reason behind it. When the Lord tells you something, he don't say it just to be talking. He don't say it just because he can. He's saying it because there's a purpose behind it. We may not know the purpose. But later on, after everything's said and done, we may know what the purpose is later on. But at that point in time, we may not know. And what I'm trying to say is we need to listen. When the Lord speaks, we need to fully listen to what he says. And don't override that. Because that's how we get in trouble. By overriding what the Lord says. Like he's already said here this morning. Run. And we all better be running. That don't mean naturally running neither. It means spiritually running. So one day it's all going to wind up. One day. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. But Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus, proving that this is very Christ. And after that, Many days were fulfilled. The Jews took counsel to kill him. He was going to do this to them to start with until the Lord got his attention and he changed his life around. So now they don't, they don't like him. So now they're going to kill him. 
That was a turn, bro. What what would you do or how close are we living to the Lord to know when somebody else might be after us? Well, Saul knew about it. He knew that these people was after him. To me, he had to be living a pretty good life to know what was going on. To me. So that ought to register with each and every one of us. If somebody was after us and they was going to do something bad to us, are we living a close enough a life for the Lord to let us know that them people was after us and we need to do something to avoid that? You want to escape? Live close to the Lord. You want to overcome? Live close to the Lord. You want to make it? <laughs> Live close to the Lord. Yeah, right. Lord. Keep listening. Yeah. But there laying a weight was known of Saul, and they watched the gates day and night to kill him. Wait, they waited for him. Thank you, Lord. They wanted to do this to him because they didn't like him. Yes. They probably no telling how many people probably don't even like me, and I don't even know nothing about it. I like for people to like me. I like to get along with people. I like to be able to communicate with people. But sometimes in your life, they may not like what you believe in. They may not like how you dress. They may not like how you act or react to different things. They'll find any excuse to come against you if they want to. Anything at all. This is the way a lot of people is nowadays. If they find out that you go to church or have anything to do with church, they start from day one when they find out, they start watching you. They start watching you. And they just waiting for you to slip up so they can say something bad about you. Yes, sir. You may go no telling how long. Yep, all the good you do. Not honest. do nothing. Yep. But you make one mistake and they'll talk about that for no telling how long. Amen. After all the good that you've done, yes. they'll always bring up that one little thing that you've done that they didn't like. You think people ain't watching you? Oh, yeah. They're watching. They are watching you. You may think, well, they don't even know that I go to church. They may know more about you than what you think because people talk. Word gets around. They know more about you than what you think they might know. Yes, Lord. Wouldn't it be so nice? I ain't saying it'll happen, and it may or it may not. Wouldn't it be so nice if you and this person could get together and talk, and they really, really seen something in you, and they really, really wanted what you had? You got to be living a good enough a life and close enough a life with the Lord for them to want what you got. Amen, when I first started coming down here, started dating my wife, I did not have the Holy Ghost. I knew about it. I've been knowing about it for many, many years, but I didn't have it. But I seen something in my mother-in-law 
I don't know if it was the first time I seen her or maybe a few times, but I seen something in her and for some reason or another, I seen something in her that I really, really wanted. And I knew there wasn't but one way to get it. I knew that. Didn't nobody have to tell me. I already knew about it. And I knew what I had to do to get it. And so one day I just made my mind up. And I did. I prayed through and I got it. Yeah, good Lord. Yeah, good Lord. She probably can tell you more about how I prayed than I probably can tell you my own self. I knew I prayed. And I prayed hard. Some of you might not believe if I even told you how hard I prayed at times, but she probably can tell you because she was there. One night I was down at the altar and I was really, really praying. I mean, I was praying hard. This is how the enemy works. My nose, it went to bleed. I was done all the praying. The first thing, no doubt, probably entered my mind is get up and get away from there. But I don't think I've done that. I don't think I did. I may be wrong. Anyhow, somebody, I think they had me some tissue or something. And if I remember right, I just kind of kept on praying. If I'm remembering right now, I hope, I hope this, I've got the story right. Yes, well, this has been a long time ago. Yes, but that's how the enemy can hinder y'all. When y'all trying to pray, he'll do anything he can to get you to stop from praying. Yes, you may be down here praying, and he might bring something up that happened no telling how many years ago just because he knew or knows that it bothers you. Yeah, All he's doing is hindering you from praying. Yeah, when something like that enters your mind, just tell the Lord, say, Lord, please forgive me of that, but I'm trying to pray, yes. and I'm trying to get what I need for my soul. Please help me to continue to pray, and please forgive me for that that i done years ago that I had forgot about, yeah, and Lord. keep on praying. Because yeah. all that the enemy is trying to do is hinder you from praying. Yeah. He'll do anything he can to get your attention. Yeah. Anything. It don't matter. Yeah. He don't care. So Saul knew about it. And them people waited at the gate day and night because they had a desire. They wanted to kill him. They wanted to do away with him. And because they want to do that, he started living for the Lord, and they didn't like him. They didn't like him when he was doing bad. They didn't like him when they turned to the Lord either. That's how people is a lot of times. Whether you do good or bad, some people are going to like you, and some people ain't. So, all we got to do is do what the Lord wants to do and don't worry about all that other stuff. <laughs> Listen to this next part. Then the disciples took him by night and let him down by the wall in a basket. The Lord made a way for him to escape because he knew that these people was after him. He made a way for him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It wasn't his time to go. Thank and the Lord made a way for him to escape that. And that's the way we don't escape things. We're going to have to live a close enough life and be pleasing to the Lord to get what we want from him and make it. But see, even after he got down, he got, he got out, so to speak. Yeah. It says right here, And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he is saved to join himself to the disciples 
for they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. Some people still didn't believe that he had made a change. There's probably people today probably can't even imagine <coughs> what kind of change I made in my life if they really didn't know how I used to be and then how I am now. I got people in here that knows how I used to be and there's people in here that knows how I am now. They probably remember the good things about me and probably some bad things about me. And they can see what a change I made in my life. And no, I'm not just talking about me. I'm talking about all y'all others in here too that don't have the Holy Ghost. You can make a change in your life. Mm -hmm. You just got to make your mind up and say, Lord, this is what I want. This is what I'm going to do. Whether I get it, or whether I don't, I'm going to keep praying to you every chance I get. I'm going to pray to you and do my very, very best to get it, even if I don't never get it. But the Lord will have mercy on you, and he'll give it to you when he sees fit. No matter how long you may have to pray, and it don't take long. You just got to have your mind made up to do what you need to do. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. You can pray at home. You can pray here. You can pray in the woods. You can pray on the school bus. You can pray at school. You ain't got to pray out loud. You can pray in a way that can't nobody hear you but the Lord. Yeah, the Lord. And he hears every time you pray. Every effort you make, he hears it all. Everything. Let's just do what the Lord wants to do, and everything will be all right. Amen. Thank you, Lord.